welcome back to Friday Night Fight. Last round, Flockton. How much content did we have? It was a lot of content. What was your favourite part? <laughs> Again, I'm going to have to say the green four driver hiding amongst the blue four. That was just, wow. Like, that, that blew my mind. Uh, never seen anything like it. <laughs> like, I can't imagine the size of the pair he's got for trying to do that. Really the audacity. Don't. Yeah. The audacity of that play. Oh, yeah. Very, very daring. Very, I, I, can, I can see why it's your favourite. I'm glad yeah. that he definitely picked up on that. I'm just thinking, like, what was going through his head? Like, <sighs> yeah, let me just park up here. Uh, green for guys. Um, they're attacking you. <laughs> <laughs> they're shooting you from the hill. Don't shoot me, though. I'm just a vehicle right next to it. But, you I'm know. pretty sure that that vehicle did get engaged, though, during that. Yes, uh, the that spy was fight. found out after he decided to play chicken with a M113. <laughs> Again, the size of him for even trying to do <laughs> just... that. You know, like, I don't know if the guys had, you know, a bit of whiskey. I don't know if, you know. You, you, know, you don't know what's going on through his mind, but. You you me. That's, that's more audacious than what I do. That's more, that's more devious than what I do. Oh, 100%. But, and you are very it's definitely very comical. Very comical what he did. So right now it looks like the server is um seeding again. They get into slots. Um looks like this is a different game mode, all in all. Mm -hmm. Um but Flockton. Yes. What what are you looking to see in this next round? Some more great content. <laughs> if I'm honest. Content, 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 content. content. There's the content on screen. Exactly, you know, um, good firefights, good engagements, you know that that's kind of what I'm looking for. Uh, it's 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 what we're all here for, you know. We're all here for the firefights. We're here for the engagements. So let's hope we get plenty of that. Absolutely, it's very important. Just having that, um, that content. <laughs> it's very important. It's what we're all here. We're here for the content. We're here to watch what's going on. But I, for my, for me personally, I really do want to see some more devious plays. You know about the devious play, Fockton. I shot yeah. you enough of times with toes on deployment for you to know I like devious plays. I don't even want to look at his face. He's not I happy. Don't even want to talk about that, man. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know what I mean? But all in all, uh, nineteen. I'm just going to say that number. Just no, no relation. But all in all, devious plays. You know, having those explosive charges on those buildings and on the road. Yeah really do things and can really change how a game goes oh, um i agree completely um you know it's it's them charges that that gained the the green four guys the upper hand um you know blue four lost most of their vehicles due to that and again smart play just not as smart as the infiltrator <laughs> the spy a spy sapping my turret but all of that stuff, oh, that, that, was, that was very good. It was down to the wire as well. Again, similar to last week, there was like two guys literally on the point mm -hmm. trying to destroy the cache with a small arms mag grenades. And it came down to just Green Fork trying to get them off the roof. And it nearly had the game. Maybe yeah. a couple more grenades could have changed the outcome. But all in all, it, was, it went into overtime. And then the person keeping it in overtime was... Yeah. Uh, found out and got rid of to say that yeah but all, yeah yeah but all in all it looks like they're beginning the slotting now and they're nearly all in it appears that our guys are currently occupying the what is it what are they taking they're on the blue four side this time and again yes it, it's um i believe it might be attack and defend because it appears that blue four has got that 15 percent uh, numbers advantage on the op four elements, so it'd be very interesting to see what they do again, depending on what the game mode is, etc., etc. So, Flockton. Yes, hello, that's my name. Four IB. How do you think they did that? That specific crew. How do you think they did in that thing? Because they were on the defensive team of Green Fort, and they were holding the very hard points of the south. Do you think they did a very good job? Yeah, yeah. Um... They used probably what a lot of what they learned in the fourth, in that in that firefight. Um, 
you know, for the current operation that we're on, Cromwell. Um, the well, sorry, no, the operation before that, Charioteer, uh, it was a lot of Fibua, and that played massively into their advantage. You know, we we do a lot of training during home rotation for things like that, and it's it's situations like that. They, they don't even think about it. They just do it. You know, it's like anything. If you run it enough, you get the muscle memory. And Absolutely. That's that. To me, that's what uh, won the green for that game. So they were definitely able to catch a lot of blue for out in the open from their hard points. Yeah. And just they had that in depth position as well because they were mutually uh, supporting positions that they were set up, which was yeah, that comes in knowledge of how to set them up. And exactly. all in all, it just turned into what seemed to be very early on in that game, a blue for advantage and victory in the initial firefight, but then turned to immediately swing into the green four aspect as, as soon as they decided to get a break and commit that attack. Blue four just lost too many people committing. And yeah. it just turned into, they got ki- diverted into kill boxes. And as we predicted, Roxon, we, um, we, they ran into traps they got carted and they died completely um you know unfortunately that is how the spartans should have won <laughs> but they didn't <laughs> it was very well done um the blue four tried to spread themselves out as much as possible attack from multiple angles and unfortunately the green four well sorry fortunately the green four were just too dug in and ultimately won Absolutely. So let's let's pay attention a little bit more to the current round here. Mm-hmm. Looks to be a sector game mode, okay. and let's just have a quick look at who's taken what roles on each team. So again, the layout for each squad is a typical uh, American layout, and so you got um, what would be a little bit different than what the uh, fourth guys are used to, but they've adapted it as best they can. So, looking at this, we've got Mackie taking a squad leader position, and our homeboy Stark has taken the platoon commander position. Um, All in all, uh, it's going to be very interesting to see how this goes about and how they're going to, you know, because they may not be used to those positions, see how their leadership strategies progress and how that, you know, reflects to them on what they do in-game. So... What do you think Stark would do with his uh, platoon now? He's on the platoon commander level. Uh, do you want us to give you the answer? Give me a polite answer. I know, I know <laughs> you've got to. Give me a polite answer, please. I've been polite all night. I think we're all we're live. You can't, you know, you can't <laughs> be polite. Be polite. To be honest, Stark can be a very good leader. You know, I've, I've known him for a while. Um, he, he thinks like a leader. So he's not going to want to waste all of his resources straight away. He's going to he's going to want to get everything set up. He's going to want to have the guys watching the the sectors. He's going to want to make sure that he's going to show the platoon level what he can do. So I hope good luck to him. Fair enough. Yeah, that's true. I I used to be in Zeus with Stark, and he he was very good, very experienced. So he's been all around. He's been in our unit for quite a long time. So it, it'll yeah. be very interesting to see how he uses that experience and translates that to the field. So again, just to reiterate, the game mode is sector. Um, I believe the attackers need to control three sectors, or enough to get a various point to advantage. And op four has got the task to defend these sectors. So. Uh, from as the attacking group is got the numbers advantage, do you think they're going to use that and try to attack all the different points at the same time, or do you think they're going to try to consolidate their attack and make a concerted effort on one point? In if I was to be, you know, leading this attack, I would try to consolidate all of the forces. You know, uh, make it as one big push. It's going to be difficult because most of most of the defenders, I feel, would stay on the one sector. Um, but if they're smart enough, they'll they'll spread all the guys out throughout the sectors. Uh, I know they have to be captured in order, 
So it's it's going to be difficult um, to to try and get them guys to push in. Absolutely, yeah. So, what you're saying is, do you think they're going to make that concerted effort, or do you think they're going to spread it out again? I think they're going to make the concerted effort. Concerted effort, one point at a time. Go yeah. wise. Definitely. Um, looks like Blue Fort. We're going into the game now. It looks like Blue Fort spawned on a carrier, which is uh, going to be quite interesting. Mm. So they've got a nice little carrier group over here, and they spawned on the destroyers. Let's have a look at what vehicles they have to transport them. Um, so given the fact they spawned on the carriers here, um, they're very limited in terms of what they can bring into the field. Um, they've got boats, helicopters, and more boats. So, how do you think that's gonna? How do you think that's gonna play in terms of the uh, main engagement? I mean, the gunboats are definitely gonna help uh, that push to try and get onto the the main field, um, getting as much suppressant fire down as possible while unloading troops. Um, the helicopters could fly right over, like we've seen in the last round, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but I would definitely focus on the gunboats. I would Absolutely. be using the ammunition in them. Absolutely. So our boys, for I be strong, are currently on the left destroyer, and they're currently organising their plan right now. Um, I do believe they would be trying to um, take the western area. That's a, that's a smart move here. Yeah, well suggested. They're going to try to land their troops to the west of the objective and push in from the high ground. Let's, yeah. let's pan over to the Opfo area and see what they've got to deal with. It looks like something would have exploded, so that's that's a that's a great that's a great start. <laughs> <laughs> so what's exploded over here? We have a helicopter that's exploded on some rocks. Maybe some questionably pilot. Was that? Uh, no, I'm not going to say it. Can't can't diss anyone from six six two. No, 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 no. Corby's <laughs> not on this team, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, so it looks like the orc has also decided to um you know do that uh so yeah. that they've also lost the tail rotor you're quite familiar with losing those as well <laughs> now no I had to say it had to say it if, if we're gonna say. start making things you know <laughs> <laughs> just slight just slight digs here and there well, <laughs> i was looking forward to this <laughs> and then you've got some range of other helicopters that are around. I'm not too sure if it's all for scenery, this area. It might just be for scenery. Yeah, uh, I think this is more for scenery than anything else, because uh, there's, a, there's a helicopter sort of just lying in the middle of nowhere. Fair enough, yeah. So, it looks like, in terms of the equipment Op4 has, they have mainly BTRs. So, they're going to be quite limited in where they can move to. Oh with speed right so once they get into their positions that's it that's pretty much it they're going to be very hard to move from sector to sector so if i was in the mindset of the defending force here right i would be again rinse and repeat the same strategy that works right if it ain't broke don't fix it <laughs> consolidate your defense on one or two points that more likely will be close together because this is a sector thing it should be the two points quite close together. So if we refer back to the map, we can see sector three and one are very close together. Yeah. And can, particularly sector three, can offer quite a lot of advantages from defending it. So you've got, you got to have a look around as the commander and see what they could use, what buildings they could build their hard points around and, and then best use those BTRs from. Um, yeah. I doubt they can use the plane unless they want to parachute their own position. But I um, don't think they have parachutes either. So might just be a distraction. All in all, um, yeah, just BTRs mainly for the defense team. But again, they haven't got time to waste here. They need to be, start building immediately. Where do you think they're going to build, Foxen? <sighs> it's hard because it's an open airfield. You know? The... You kind of create a choke point, you know. It's it's definitely difficult. Going to be sorry. It is definitely going to be difficult. Kind of get me words out to try and build a defensive area, you know. So unless they have the the BTRs roaming around, 
that is possibly the only defense I think that we're going to have from them. Yeah, so I, yeah, I can see what you mean there, Flotsam, definitely. Um, it looks like Op4 have gotten the memo and have started to move out towards their positions. And it does look like they're going to be trying to hold the southern area. So again, as predicted, uh, they're going to be trying to consolidate round sets of three and one. Now, if I was the Blue Four commander in this situation, all right, I'd know what I would be doing as a defending force. It's yeah. the, you've seen it last week. Pretty much in most of the objectives, they just consolidated their defenses around one point. So here, it'll probably be the same. I would, as a Blue Four commander, I'd be like, right, this is sector control. How is it going to plan out? How are they going to do this? And I think, yeah, they're definitely gonna, going to consolidate around about Sector 3 and Sector 1. Um, so, realistically, there's quite a lot of nice buildings. Uh, but we don't know if Opfort knows the approach vector of Blue Four. So, they could be guessing that they might be coming from the west and structure their defences in a bad area. Yeah. So, you never know whether or not they've got that information. But I believe, if you refer to the map, they can see that Blue Fort are operating as a carrier, but they don't know if their ground vehicles can be sling loaded from the uh, um, destroyers and stuff. So they could bring stuff in like that. So they, they're not too familiar with that. So as a as a op four commander, definitely do what they're doing. They're building, doing a little bit of Minecraft here, just build that, put a wall there, <laughs> make some make some little. Nice little leaves and stuff there. Definitely all in all. generation there, going for Minecraft. Exactly. <laughs> all the things. Minecraft. Minecraft's a classic. You can't beat a Minecraft server. Yeah, can't but you would think, you know, newer generation they would go for something like Fortnite. Don't do that. Don't don't even bring that up. <laughs> don't even bring that up. I got problems enough with that. So let's see what Blue Force is doing currently. We panned over there, and we're on the two destroyers still. So they look like they are going to be utilizing the helicopters mainly with the, their transport. Um, it doesn't look like they're going to be jumping down to the other boats. So they may take a gunboat or two, but from personal usage of those gunboats, it's very difficult to actually get good shots on target because all of these uh, weapons here are... 50 cows or less or 762. There is yeah. no GMG because the Friday Night Fights rules, all GMGs because they can be so devastating have been made into a HMG. Now, it's going to be very hard. It's going to be like gunning on the side of the river. It's, it's, it's going to be very difficult for those gunners to actually put any effective fire down. And so it'll be very interesting to see what they're going to do that with that uh, boat. They might just charge it up the beach and maybe get onto a point must be quite that. interesting to see i, I doubt it would happen but it would be interesting be, like, to be fair, nothing surprises me now we had a two helicopters ram into a roof and a spy the last round so <laughs> <laughs> you never know what's going on here you never know what they're going to come up with but we'll bring it all if the content's there we'll show it to you oh, so yes. just generally Next That's all great. we can really say. Blue Four strategy is going to be all up in the air. I, I don't have any good um, good ideas of what Blue Four can do because they've got really two paths they can go down. They can either go down an amphibious route and consolidate a lot on the coastline, or they can try to take it on a more cautious approach, land quite far back, and come in from the from from the ground. But. Um, that amphibious landing, if they do it quite quickly, they can make a really qu nice foothold uh, yeah. before Op4 can react. Uh, but it definitely looks like Op4 is trying to spread out their units currently. Um, you, from a Blue 4 perspective, what would you do? Would you go for the amphibious approach or the air approach? See, again, it could be down to that distraction technique. Could land the two helicopters behind the airfield, uh, where we could see that there was sort of like a mountain range or a hill range. Mm -hmm. um, so you could, you know, the helicopters going over is obviously going to distract the, the, the op four guys. Meanwhile, that's happening. We're going to have the blue four boats landing. Yeah. So we could, you know, we could see how that 
could pan out. Absolutely. It's five minutes left for setup. It looks like um, Opfer is finally starting to build up their positions. They're trying to set up their hard points. Mm -hmm. uh, it does look like they've um, built some trenches around and does have one lone Opfer on the coastline, possibly as a scout to try to um, see what's um, going on. Try to hide everything. So, possibly as a scout and then hide there and then relay if the amphibious landing's been chosen. But as you were saying, I think a joint, a combined arms, both from the air landing behind them and amphibious landing to the north of the airfield would be best. Because yeah. they don't want to be landing near the south because that's where most of the fences would be consolidated around. Exactly. Hitting them from two different directions, it's going to cause a lot of confusion. So Absolutely. it could be out to the advantage of Blue 4. Let's hope it does. Mm hmm so, X-Ray, we saw the defending forces X-Ray, some dirty plays, some very, very interesting plays last round. So, are we expecting that again? I hope so. <laughs> you <laughs> certainly hope so, don't you? <laughs> yeah, because, you know, I, I'd love to see something like that happen again. Um, it, it was, <laughs> I, I still can't describe how I feel about it. Because it gives us actually that much pleasure to watch that. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. <laughs> it looks like Op4 are trying to get inside the planes now. Certainly very interesting. Yeah, we, um, they tried that a few weeks ago, if I remember correctly. There was uh, a few jets on the on the uh, runway. Pavey yeah. tried to jump in one. And uh, unfortunately, well, only for decoration. <laughs> so it does look like the BTRs are moving out. It's going to be interesting to see how they're going to be used because those are the main fighting force for Op4 to use at the moment. So do you think they're going to take some hit and run tactics or do you think they're going to uh, try to get into those hard points made for them and just fight in a hold down position? I mean, to be honest, at first I would have put them on the course line. If they know that they've got to come through the coast, then them vehicles can be there to intercept the boats. Mm -hmm. And it, it might seem a bit dirty, but that could potentially be quite a few sections gone before the fight's even started properly. <laughs> okay, it looks to, looks to be that Op4 has elected to do a different strategy this time. Maybe shake it up a little bit. So it looks that they're actually leaving Sector 3 mostly undefended and are consolidating their forces around Sector 2 and Sector 1. But as we know, uh, the movement between those two sectors is definitely going to be limited after contact comes out because they haven't got vehicles to quickly cover that open ground. So, yeah. yeah. It, BTRs are going to be very important. It kind of creates a funnel as well. Because in order to get to Sector 3... They've got to bypass either Sector 1 or Sector 2. Mm -hmm. So the, it's kind of like a choke point. Although it could potentially cause crossfire, it's 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 a smart move. Hmm. It looks like uh, they've changed strategy again. And they're withdrawing from Sector 2 and pulling back down towards Sector 3 and Sector 1. It may be that they just defend Sector 1 in a situation. Um, it's going to be very hard uh, to take Sector 1 again. Like You're going to give a Blue 4 a nice bloody nose trying to take this area. But defending the urban area is going to be very key here. But there's not a lot of good buildings to get those arcs of fire out. There's lots of warehouses, but they're only good for holding ground. They're not really good to dominate the ground and uh, the fields around it. They can just the actual buildings themselves. So it's going to be very interesting to see whether or not they actually change that by building on top of these buildings and actually making it very difficult for Blue 4 to operate. But it does look like Op4 have elected to get reconnaissance because it's very important in this. Getting the reconnaissance done to know what your enemy's doing can really define a game. And so they got some forward observers on this peninsula here uh, waiting to see if that amphibious load is going to come through. You've also got uh, further um, op for units 
out in the uh, far west. Probably going to take up the hills to try to catch out um, the blue four. If the helicopters do come across. Yeah, exactly. If the helicopters do come across. And just on that, the game has started. So let's see what blue four is elected to do. So it looks like one helicopter has taken off right away. Mm -hmm. And it seems that the there's a queue forming uh, for a helicopter ride. So it looks like they're very much investing in the helicopter approach. Both the gunboats are currently out. One has our boys at the helm. Our McGowan is currently driving one. And we have Tommy Slotter doing the other one. Interesting name. But all in all, <laughs> all in all, let's see how 4IB uses this gunboat to their advantage here. So, Flockton. Yes, that's right. Let's pan back over towards the Op 4 and have a look what they're doing with their BTRs because they are very close together. What do you think they're doing out here on the west? I think they're going to be covering uh, that potential attack route because um, all it takes is the two helicopters full of full of infantry and they can push through from that side. Um, however, the BTRs, they're, they're going to be useful because the second the helicopters do try to land, it's going to get rounds down on them and it might cause them to wave off. You know, they might, they might become heavily damaged. Again, causing a lot of casualties. Mm. It does look like they've decided to set these BTRs in a nice overwatch position. Maybe to try to catch out any helicopters landing to the east, which I think you just said, like, they might try to engage these. So the helicopters appear on the map to be coming in from the south. Uh, and also gunboats are also landing troops on the south. They literally rammed it up the beach, as we were saying, and 4 b is dismounting in force from this gunboat. So that gunboat is now beached, eh? Okay? <laughs> and, uh... Definitely beached. <laughs> and now it looks like maybe another boat is going to try to beach but these forward observers have not seen anything and now are pulling back maybe reporting that the uh, amphibious approach isn't coming or maybe yeah, the amphibious yeah. approach is coming further to the south I mean I'm hoping they've spotted that boat that's uh, trying to come in on the right there um, if they haven't then it looks like they might be trying to beach this one as well coming at speed quite foggy. Yeah. yeah, very foggy. Very foggy combat now. That's yeah. going to be very interesting. So they've dismounted one person at this beach now. Which will be... Oh, right. Maybe they're... I, I have no idea. Maybe the driver's messed up there. Maybe he hasn't beached it properly. It's not that difficult. Hit the accelerator, go on. But, okay. <laughs> Okay, well, it looks like they're dismounting in the middle of the ocean here, so um, they've got a bit of swimming to do. But it looks like one of the helicopters is also landing to the south. Maybe the BTRs have picked up on that and will push it while the infantry's in the open. But further to that, it looks like more infantry has been landed to the west, and the BTR is engaging that helicopter that has landed. Um, the, the helicopter is returning fire, but realistically, they're being engaged by an armoured vehicle giving away their position further. And they also got players on the position where they drop the uh, infantry. So that infantry has been lit up in multiple different ways. <laughs> See, I'm I just bang it out, I bang it out, Flutton. And um, now they Opfall definitely knows where they're coming from. Mm -hmm. And um, they may try to consolidate more forces to that south. Well, we've still got the guys back on the boats. Absolutely. Uh, so it looks like uh, the command elements are trying to put a base of fire down uh, from just the general direction uh, where they got fire from. I don't think they've recognized it's an armored vehicle that has done this. And uh, this is the command element as well. This is the uh, the uh, one of the command elements. So it's lucky that the BTR didn't get any lucky shots off um, for Blue 4 uh, because they could have lost quite a lot of their total organization from losing their command element. Um, let's have a look at this westernmost blue fort element. It looks like they've stopped their advance and are currently holding 
unknown what they are holding for. Possibly they are wondering what the Opal is doing all the way on this hill, and that's kind of changed their plan. Yeah. Uh, if you have a look at the Devious, Devious defensive team, um, X-Ray, they look to be moving out again uh, as a team of four. Nothing real much in their path at the moment, but they are heading roughly in the direction of the Blue Four Elements. If we have a look over at the Blue Four Elements to the south, uh, we're looking at this. Ambush. Yeah. Looks like they're just setting up defensive positions at the moment and waiting for the full encirclement of their troops to be uh, complete. Uh, so, just they waiting they for their go ahead. We've got the uh, X ray yeah, unit of Blue Four being landed to the northwest. Yeah. Uh, by helicopter, and they're going to see what they can do from their annoying approach. Um, the units back on the destroyers seem to be being picked up now. Um, a queue seems to have formed. Um, looks like some memorial is going on for uh, as if whoever's in that helicopter. Maybe they think they're going to blow up and die. But they, yeah, they got the landing. They got the landing. Here we go. Everyone's storming on. That's good. So all in all, we still got the platoon commander here, Stark, staying behind. Not too sure what his plan is. He might get uh, dropped later on. But I think again the helicopter is full, and that's going to delay more forces from Blue Four getting on the field. There's three people left on the destroyer. <laughs> it must be quite annoying waiting that long. Fortunate last. <laughs> oh, unlucky. It looks like the gunboat is making a close pass on the east, but the fog means that they can't see anything. These gunboats are next to useless in these fog. Yeah. Um, but I think they need to recognise it definitely. Go ahead, Proctor. I mean, just in that in that shot there, you know, the 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 boat disappeared within an instant. So you know, could you imagine what it's like for these guys on the ground? Absolutely. Um, I think by the time you need to recognize that that gunboat is next to useless at the moment. Um, it is. They still got everyone on the guns, but the guns aren't really that useful if you have to part beat yourself even to look to the nearest bush. Yeah. Um, the fog is very intense. It looks like on the actual objective, the fog is thinner because you're you know you've gone up in altitude. Yeah. Um, but the fog definitely on that coastline is masterfully for approach. And they've definitely used that to their advantage for this amphibious landing. But um, coming up to this open area, the sight lines aren't as limited. Let's have a look at some of the op for defensive positions. What do you think about these? Uh, personal opinion, not very great. Mm. Purely because, you know, they're, they're, they're quite wide in the open. They've got a lot of buildings that they could be using to to advantage, you know. Um, let let the blue four forces push in. And again, you've got you've got ambush points right there. But you know, we're just watching. Absolutely, <laughs> I think it's a very good point that they've pushed out quite wide, and they've also got this backstop pretty much this wall. This backstop is a good place to fall back to in case they have to abandon these positions. There is a funnel here. They have put a trench, which makes it even harder to climb over. But yeah. what does this also represent for a grenadier? One good enough grenade, and you know, could be game exactly. over for a few of them. Because if if we if we go back to looking at the uh, op four, they they're quite bunched together. Mm. You know, so like like we say, one decent grenade. That's four or five people taken out. Absolutely, especially on this line here. Yeah. Um, they've built round loads of trees, but if you're an experienced uh, rifleman of an under-barrel grenade launcher, you can see those trees, and that's what you aim for, because your ranging doesn't matter too much. You're firing at a vertical long target, and if he gets a grenade shot here, right, on these trees, he can spread shrapnel all along which can really, really um, injure up for and put them to fall back before they should do. So I don't really think these defensive positions are ideal for their position, for what they're trying to do. Uh, where would you put the, the, the positions instead, Procton? Like I said, I would, I would use the buildings. You know, it, it, it's not a, a complex area, but it's, 
it's enough to give enough concealment, enough protection, and enough to create just little snap ambushes. Oh, does it look like we've got a firefight going on there? Yeah, we got a nice little bit of content here. Content! Content! content. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like Op4 elements have been caught out in the open by the waiting blue four element over to the west. Large house like has been popped by I believe two Op4 have lost their lives. No, correction, three Op4 have lost their lives, and that's from the X-ray element. So our defending, you know, goodness me, what was that explosion? So there was a large explosion as well. More content. It's all going off everywhere, Clockton. Hard to keep up. <laughs> uh, but it looks like one of the BTRs has been taken out by 4IB. Which yes, is, lads. Which have is at it. it. They, needed to, they need to start getting rid of these BTRs because they are the biggest threat right now. Absolutely. We, Absolutely. Four, Great uh, shot by 4IB uh, to take out that BTR that must have been driving around them. Now it looks like Blue 4 starting to push into the area and making a concerted effort into the pits and ground. Um, they're getting to quite close quarters fighting just in the little bit of the uh, trees here. Um, a large amount of fire coming in from Op 4 down onto Blue 4 and Blue 4 sort of caught out of position. Op 4 has the covered position here. Um, but it does look like Op 4 is breaking content because they're not too sure how much... Yeah, exactly. It looks like one of the traps laid by Opful has been set off in anticipation of this push. Uh, but sadly, I don't think it's wiped out any of the Blue 4 elements. So, a very brief bit of contact there. Very strong, but a lot's happened so far. Opful has lost their X-ray units. The same spies, you know, the same people that had such a large game impact on the last round. And they've also lost one of their big heavy hitters of being a BTR crew. They've lost an entire BTR, and that is definitely going to affect them. Now, a large amount of crossfire is coming down onto these Blue 4 pushes from the south. Um, very hard position for Blue 4 to be in. What do you think they should do here, Clockton? Um, definitely try and find a flank. Uh, I know we have the guys on the hill at the, at the back there. Um, they can, when pushed forward and through the off 4, that are currently up there, um, they can start providing fire down from a different angle. So then mm -hmm. it's taking the pressure off the guys, giving the massive push to try and break through into the airfield. Um, Absolutely. So at the moment, they should hold the ground, you know, trying to conserve their ammo because Op4 are going to try to lay rounds down to take as many Blue 4 out as possible. So if the um, Blue 4 can just hold their ground, conserve their ammo, then it's going to make their final push. That looks a bit easier. Absolutely. And it does look like the gunboat is basically given up and just started to let off rounds left, right and centre. That minigun is just putting rounds everywhere, taking up a lot of attention. Looks like Op4 is actually getting targeted pretty well by that machine gun. Um, more crossfire coming down from the Op4 in the air traffic control tower, a very strong position by all counts. And it just looks like they're putting rounds down, but we really can't see the enemy from that range. They just know roughly where they are, but again, you were saying they need to conserve that ammunition. This isn't really doing it, is it? It really is. You know, the next, the next uh, contact he comes into, and he's going to suddenly realise that he's going to get the dead man's click. And once that happens, this fight's done. Absolutely. So we have a two-man team of Op4 try to do a flank, but it looks like they're holding their positions oh, no, now. Um, Blue4 is still, is still pushing up, up. Uh, and they look like with the flank from Op4, they've actually been outflanked with that flank by Blue4 because they shifted right from that contact, yeah. possibly to get further into the fog so their approach is more masked. Because a large amount of fire is coming down here, so that's dissuading Blue 4 from pushing these trees. Because they know there's solid defensive lines here. They know it's been anticipated. There was an explosive charge that went off all, all goodness me. So it looks like um, this Blue 4 is now pushing up. Let's see what he can see from his position. Arguably, not much. Yeah, that fog. It's, it's playing a massive factor into this fight. You know, the, the more foggy it is, the harder... Look at that. It's, it's... Absolutely. It so it looks like 
the squad from Bluefort is now pulling right. And let's see whether or not uh, the op will realise that they're being outflanked here. That's they awesome. may hear the footsteps and they may start engaging. I believe he's actually going to walk over one of op four just there. This is risky. Yeah, he, they've literally walked past the two op four hiding in the bush. Right. And we they've managed, managed to bypass these positions. That might bite them in the arse later on because... Like <laughs> yeah, quite literally, because they're, they're going to be completely outflanked by those positions. Um, further to that, looking on the west, Op4 making some larger pushes. Uh, but it looks like our 4 rb lot may be caught out of pocket uh, by this retreating Op4 element. So th uh, there's no fog here. So well, if they get spotted in the open, which I think they've just been by total war. Oh, no, he hasn't noticed them. So... You got Op4 and Blue4 pushing right next to each other here. Um, it's going to be very interesting to see whether or not um, the Op4 leaders recognise that. It looks like they're getting distracted by the helicopters. Do you think this is looking good for our guys in 4RB here? Uh, it's squeaky bum time. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> you know, um, the helicopters are causing the great distraction, though. Unfortunately, they're going to be spotted anyway. Yep, they've just been spotted Dead. here, you know, but they haven't, haven't been engaged. They're waiting to see if they get bogged down in engagements onto the airfield. And then it looks like they're going to try to, the op are going to try to make a large push on them. Uh, but he's going to radio to the rest of his men that there's clear blue four taking up positions on his rocks. And the spacing isn't too good. And nearly every, quite a lot of people have their binoculars out instead of having their rifle, which is not going to be ideal. So I think... Follows radio to his fellow men, and they're just waiting to see how many get that information across to the other elements and see whether or not they can make anything of it and make it some good trade. It looks like further to that, a uh, blue four have now gone back into contact, and those two people hiding in the bushes are coming back to bite them in the ass. You would come. You it does look like one person in blue four has been taken out by op four on that flank, and blue four is none the wiser. Uh, further to that, they're starting to get engaged from the rear. 4IB is getting shot from the rear. Rotto is starting to engage from the tree. But looks like they're being outgunned here by just a sheer firepower from 4IB. Another helicopter flying over, trying to bait attention from inside the point. Um, further to that, explosive charge goes off in the center of here. Probably unsuspecting the engineer that placed that thinking that there was blue four in that position and that rather than there was op four that's definitely injured by the op four what do you take of that <sighs> that's a court marshalling definitely um it's mistakes like that that can win or lose your game you know it, it looks like not many people have been injured from that blast but it shouldn't have happened another explosive charge goes off in the woods uh, probably take injuring this the flanking section, but the flanking two-man team has now been uh, one of them has taken casualties, and the, now Blue Four, in terms of their attack strategy for the south, they're caught between two hard points. They don't know how large that element to the south of them is, and so that's really going to bog down their attack, which is not ideal. We pan over back to our boys in 4IB. They don't know how. Again, they don't know how large the optical element is, and they're probably. Uh, they got large amount of casualties. They're probably waiting for the fellow op four to outflank this. Oh no, the fellow blue four to outflank the op four currently engaging them. So you can see just a massive blue four coming down. And again, op four should have been on the move. Fight, dip, fight, dip, fight, and shoot and scoot. But really, they've gotten bogged down. May have gone a bit greedy there. And now they're caught between a rock and a hard place. What is taking a shot to the leg? Now, really back out, caught out of position. I think this might be it for Rado. He's heavily injured. Yeah. Further to that, we got more Opal coming behind them, engaging. Game over for them. Thanks for attending. <laughs> <laughs> and it looks like that both of Opal on this hill have been eliminated, saving for IB. Hopefully, now they would be in a good position. They have taken. Casualties, uh, I believe that's one dead man. There's yeah. two men that have been dead. But it looks like 
blue four might be shooting blue as well on this rock formation. Well, let's hope not. Uh, it's there, let's hope not. We got the BTR to the north getting gren gren grenades into the rear of it, but no AT shot. And the elements to the north have pushed down to take that top sector. Uh, the blue four element coming from the south has now whipped around to the east and taken the hill, which had the uh, a explosive charge on it that was preemptively exploded on Op4. Um, so that's caused them to retreat with their wounded. Now, Blue Force capitalised on this and going in. Exactly. You know, it's that capitalisation that they actually needed. Um, it's it's all about taking the opportunities that you never miss. Or is it the other way around? Absolutely. So we have a look at the current positions of most of the... Uh, Elements, uh, Blue Force taken a large area to the west, um, although they're completely isolated from the group to the east. Yeah, you're We've right. We've got some content going down here. Uh, sadly, one man has gone down from Blue Force while trying to push their positions here. So, he's probably, but now that's alerted the rest of Op4 that they're pushing in. Yeah. And they need to start defending from that direction. Which I wonder how far with. they're going to be pushing along this coastline to try to get a position on them. Well, to be fair, they've got a clear run if they go, you know, a couple of, couple of hundred metres more. Um, they've got a clear run straight in. And however, they're going to be met in a massive crossfire. Mm. Very true. So, and if the uh, gunner's still in the uh, air traffic control tower, he could cause some real problems. Absolutely. This BTR, the last remaining BTR for Op4, is stuck, still taking fire, um, along with some scattered infantry to the north, maybe possibly catching some Blue Force unawares of their position. Oh, no, they have started to engage and have caught another person from uh, Blue Force out of position. Two people from Blue Force just go down, one of them which has long range, which means he was in a command position. So that's going to be very devastating for for just then just losing two men to that fight exactly um you know we need a th they need a not so much think more but they, they need a i don't know how well their communicating is uh, communication is mm -hmm. for we know the, the section might not be communicating very well um he has a very good position if he can get up and uh, see a bit more of the, the field there um but no, Blue 4 are giving a good push, so we just need to see how it's going to pan out, to be fair. I believe um, from that scattered contact, um, Op4 now have an idea that they're pushing from that direction. A large amount of smoke going down by Blue 4 to try to get in on these urban areas. Now they're starting to actually make quite a lot of fire going down. Um, Looks like the gun crews from that uh, boat have realized how the futility of that gunboat uh, with this fog level and have now dismounted and starting to engage. Um, probably their boat is beached somewhere on here as well. But all in all, um, now there is into urban fighting. And as we saw last round, urban fighting can change anyway, depending on how devious minded you can be. Exactly. And them guys on the rooftops, they're going to have a very good advantage. Especially if they keep themselves down, keep themselves hidden until the blue four forces have passed through. Absolutely. So it looks like um, we have quite a lot of combat going still in the north of just this one man. Um, large amount of grenades being thrown. He's starting to treat himself, but is again caused further casualties for blue four. Um, really, really hurting blue four here. Yeah, I mean, you know, like we said last round, one guy can change the, the swing of this fight. Yeah. Looks like yeah. Wheaton's won that has now dominated the northern area. Uh, so with this southeastern push by Bluefall, what do you think they need to be doing here? Keep at it. Um, I mean, the numbers seem very thin compared to what we've seen a few minutes ago. Um, so really the guys on the hill opposite there that we're looking at, they need to be laying down rounds to get the enemy to turn their head the other way. Oh, sorry. Not Absolutely. The enemy. Uh, red 4. Up 4. Red 4. Same thing. Um, so this, yeah. This Nuzzy is definitely having a lot of game impact here by just dominating on the top of this roof. Mm -hmm. 
Um, although he does look to be noticed now and it's getting to rep fire against him. Another charge went off by Opfall, which has destroyed their own walls for cover, anticipating that Bluefall would have been outside the walls again too soon, too soon uh, for much impact. But it looks like they've mildly injured some people over here, but we're not too sure whether or not that was the firefights going on from here. Uh, looks like some op for and op for going on right now. See if they able to communicate this, but um, no, I don't think they are. No, it looks like there might be an op for and op for incident, and now it's getting into a very sticky situation because op for are now looking towards their own man and have downed him. Now these blue four know that there's lots of shooting going on and they've got eyes on and they're not paying attention. They're dealing that everyone's looking at themselves. Or the yep. person that's bandaging themselves instead of focusing, they're doing a counter attack. You need to find the enemy and destroy him. Exactly. But um, this might turn out pretty badly for Op4 if these Kami Slaughter and Sasha realize that um, something's going down here. It looks like another large explosion from the ATC, maybe scuttling the building so Op4 or uh, Blue 4 can't take it. What yeah. do you think? There it goes. Um, that would have been a very. Uh, a very useful point. It has a height advantage for the rest of the airfield. So the fact that you know they've potentially detonated that to, to prevent. Oh. Oh. Sorry to interrupt you there, Foxen. The pilots decided to dive their helicopter into the ocean. Well, that was a bit of a silly thing to do. <laughs> Just right <laughs> over. Don't worry, we got it. We got the content. We did get it. So that has happened. <laughs> well, um, the BTR is still maneuvering around the northern area. That's still alive. It does look like, um, again, they still haven't even taken a single sector, Blue 4. They, they just kind of get that push. You know, they just, they need to carry the momentum through to get that push. It just seems like they don't have it right now. Absolutely. I, I can definitely agree with you on there. Um, Nazi again, bring some large amount of fire down on the Blue 4 pushes. I'm not too sure what's happened along this wall, uh, but it looks like Op4 is now fanned back in, and have they've <laughs> revived the uh, the the um, friendly fire incident. So that guy's back up, luckily. Uh, Probably some uh, stern words given around that. Stern words. Quite possibly. Quite possibly. So it looks like that Fred has um, is now they've captured sector two. Mm -hmm. So, realistically, Blue 4 have now captured one sector. Um, yep, there it is. Two sector. Gone. Two sector? Sector 2. Sector 2. <laughs> sector 2, yes. So, again, Blue 4 just bogged down. So, it looks like our boys have pushed quite audaciously across the airfield. Brave and move. I know, I know, but the four IB are still quite scattered to the rear. Looks like they took contact from a remaining bit of op four to their rear, and they've destroyed the op four. But now they're a bit bogged down, a bit injured. They got quite a lot injured on the ground. They're going to be out of this fight for quite a long time. Yeah. Um, the the main focus would be, you know, get the guys up, and then getting that push because we've just seen there. Uh, them guys pushing across and when we're looking at the overall of the map right now the op four are looking very thinned out you Absolutely, know, they didn't have that all-round defense did they? There was no, no. all-round defense coming from op four and it's, it's really biting them in the arse that that weighted western approach um, is not that, that western approach has just come in and Devastated the positions of op four. What a grenade oh. What a what a play from there! That was fantastic. Because um, I, I think I did see earlier that uh, sector three has also been taken, meaning that there's one sector left. Absolutely. You know. So, uh, four IB again, still out this fight, doing a lot of medical. Hopefully, they know that they've eliminated the enemy around them. But we've got one guy. Uh, he appears to be quite glitched out and is currently getting shot at. Uh, but the BTR is coming down to try to counter this attack coming in. But they have been directly hit and their engine is out. The BTR is damaged to a severe degree. 
That is a second hit on the BTR. That is going up. And the dismounts are properly being engaged all around by Blue Court. They need to be gunned down. No quarter given. Now the cook off alone as well. That's that's going to be dangerous. Yeah, that was a very big, big thing. A big loss from Op4. And this game has immediately switched into Blue Four's favour. Look, Op4 is completely encircled. Yep. Again, you know, we called it. The attack with the am amphibious vehicles as well as the airframes. Um, it, it's it's played massively into blue four hands. Absolutely. Oh, looks like that man is dead. Quite well, a lot of casualties it, spread around here. Yeah, it's just about getting the the rest of their guys out of the the, the playing field. And this, this area has been pushed out. It's been pushed out of this building with a trade. But again, Op4 is in a really, really precarious position here. They're, they're still holding their old positions, but they're actually inverted now. They're holding the rear <laughs> of these positions. <laughs> it's quite is... interesting. We look like we have one man crawling up towards this line, seeing if we can wipe out any Op4 who are currently stationed here. Which so is they're being very cautious in their approach. Yeah. Right now, Blue 4 need to know that they've completely encircled the Op 4 and now just pushing on all sides, trying to take out as much as they can. I mean, like like I pointed out, you know, the, the Op 4 are looking very thinned out right now. Absolutely. Just very looking on the map alone, they're having a chat now, um, but deciding what they're going to try to do. Both uh, machine gunners here. Uh, one's now healing the other, which is an interesting play. Um, buddy, buddy system going on though. And Op4 is now caught out of position with Bl Bluefort engaging. Maybe he was trying to make a play and try to um, thin out some Bluefort. Bluefort reinforcements are coming in unopposed from the north. And there's only one sector left. I'm probably going to say that's all, that's all folks. <laughs> you know. It's quite possible, isn't it? But... We've seen it last round, you know, we thought Blue 4 heavily outnumbered Green 4, and Green 4 won. So, it, it's, again, it's going to be... So the machine gun is trying to take out these, um, these two man machine gun is trying to take out these uh, things, and they're taking casualties, a lot of casualties, and they went up front, went against the Grenadier, and didn't really end well. All these two man blue four and yeah, um, it can be <laughs> yeah again the the forces from the north are now being engaged by the encircled op for units one literally just goes down two go down in this exchange of fire it looks like this man's also going to be exposed as well a lot of fire going down a lot of trades going down and op for is coming out worse from it Grenades coming in, injuring loads of people. Let's and it looks like the Op4 opened this door incrementally, trying to catch out a blue four, which they have here. They've caught out that blue four. A bad grenade goes out, and that definitely puts a damper. N Naps going in for the push, trying to get this um this hard point taken out from Op4. He's medding. Do you think that's a good idea when you're literally right next to the enemy? Definitely not. Definitely not. The first thing you want to do is win the firefight. Absolutely. I, ca I can't imagine what's going on through the op forwards' minds here. Shot, they're completely encircled. I'd be running for my life in this situation. They've got nowhere to run. A pistol comes out. There's pistol on pistol combat. The content is real. <laughs> But lots of fire going down, and Blue 4 making a very strong push. Yeah. The defences look like it's coming around, but Blue 4 is coming in to put a further encirclement down on Op 4. Now, look, now the only side, but there's no concern that the casualties before are lagging behind because Blue RB knows that this is the be all end all fight. This is where it gets decided, and they are unsure what's going on. 
Blue Fool taking the Northern Hardpoints away from Op4 and the Machine Gunner is still alive along this bush line. Oh! Spoke too soon. <laughs> spoke too soon. 15 minutes remaining on the clock. Uh, Blue Fort finally uh, for every engaging from the west. Further engaging and bringing that encirclement round the op for you can just see encircle troops they die yeah. so quickly in this situation because they got you can't get cover from all sides. It's very difficult to do so. Nowhere to go. Nowhere to go. Op for is in real bind right here. They might even be put most of them are off the point even. They're not actually within the sector. So if um Blue Four kills those currently on the point. They don't even need to get a full domination victory here. Easy they, they can just get, yeah, just get the point. Perfectly fine. Easy. So it looks like Four B has occupied this building. Flockton, what yes. game impact do you think is going to be happening from Four B's late arrival into this firefight? <laughs> well, you know, the, with the Four I B being where they were, trying to get themselves back into some kind of uh, formation, some kind of fighting. Uh, fit stay. Yeah, the Arriving this late, they're going to have more ammo. They're going to have the wit about them a bit more. Roger. So, for me, personally, I think this could be a good push from the fourth guys. Lots didn't take out. Another op for there. Again, Blue Force pushed up towards where their old machine gunners were. We got four be start medding on the point now. Um, really isolated. The platoon commander is really stuck in there with Stark. Yeah. He's managed to stay alive quite long. He always stays alive, this Stark. Quite <laughs> impressive, really. It's all luck. It's all luck, really, yeah. So, again, up for caught out in the open. Short getting nailed by the open up for, but trading. Foyka and uh, Eason uh, left uh, to engage uh, these two op four. I believe Eason's the one to get the good shot here. And Eason gets the shot on the op four, meaning that there's only two men left hiding in the trench, both injured. Wow. Do you have a tiny little violin by any chance, Plotton? Just just a little bit of violin, just go. About mm, as small as I can do for you, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like. Um, they're going to be trying to find where the rest of the op four are. Possibly Which? Stark might find him, might snip out. Where's the op four? Where is well, he? You know, there's quite a few blue four guys around right now. So this isn't going to take as long as you would think. Absolutely um, not. I think this game is safe to call, isn't it, Flockton? Pretty much, yeah. Pretty much. So, what do you think op four could have done differently here? Again, um, oh, a charge goes off by Op4 in a hope, but it looks like they are pushing hard, and that is a victory by Blue. Oh, my goodness! That's it. Another great round. Another great round for Friday Night Fight. The second round has concluded with a Blue Four victory. Uh, yep. We saw quite a lot this round. I'm going to uh, go to you, Flockton. What was your favourite moment of this round? The favourite moment has to have been that final encircled push. You know, all of the Blue 4 guys, they'd, they'd come from everywhere around. And it, it was that final push that really gave them what they need. Um, it was, you know, it was well thought out, like was said. Um, the attack from two sides. You had the amphibious attack and you had the uh, airframes going over. So, you know, it was very well planned on Blue Force side. So, yeah, very well planned and very well executed. Yeah, absolutely. Anything I can really say by Op4 is that they spread their units very thin and the collapse of their ARD was a bad call. The, the abandonment of that ATC tower allowed both 4OB and a further Blue Fort element just to come straight across the airfield unopposed. Massively. Massively unopposed. unopposed. So that, yeah, that was a very clear mistake by Op4. But my favourite moment would have been 
Um, very hard because there was there was just decent plays all around there, really decent plays. Exactly, yeah. Um, there was... But the pistol and pistol combat, that's my favourite. The content, <laughs> the proper content that was. The yeah, pistol and right. pistol combat when both of them knew that, you know, it, it couldn't last much longer. A duel. The duel. Duel of fates. Anyways, what we're going to do is we're going to go play another video for you a lot. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more coverage of Friday Night Fight. Take care.